My fingerprint, my face, the way I move, all of these can be turned into unique biometrics and be used to identify me. For example, for making online payments. But how secure is this technology really? Today on SHIFT. When I wait at this bar, a system registers my face and lets the barman know which customer is next in line. I've never found my face more useful. I use my fingerprint to unlock my phone and to get access to this high security area, a computer first needs to scan my body movements. Biometrics are increasingly replacing typical passwords and access keys. For example... Biometric systems can recognize a person's specific physical attributes, their fingerprints, facial features, iris or retina. The technology is already used around the world by the Somali army, Indian doctors, and for authenticating patients for important drugs or for online banking on smartphones. There are even systems that look under your skin, so to speak, such as infrared scanners that are used in vein matching. Oxygen-poor blood in veins absorbs more infrared light than surrounding tissue so that vein patterns can be matched. Scientists are currently developing technology that can recognize a person on the basis of their heartbeat. Others are working on identifying a person by their brain waves. Sounds like biometrics are super practical. I no longer need those endless letter, number and character password combinations. Happy days. Or is there a catch? We talked to Professor Christoph Meinl to find out. He teaches Internet Technologies and Systems at a Potsdam-based research institute. What's more secure, Professor Meinl? Passwords or biometrics? Using your fingerprint to log in is obviously more convenient. You just put your finger on the reader, are identified, and then you're in. That's much easier than typing a password. Passwords are often weak and get hacked. They're a little out of date, but password-protected systems are easy to implement. That's probably why they're so common. That's a cost issue. The more sensors I can use to scan a fingerprint or face, the more accurately I can capture someone's biometric profile. The security of this technology depends on how well it's implemented. If there are enough sensors, this is more secure than passwords. Iris recognition, fingerprint scans and facial recognition are similar in the sense that they all check for a single, constant biometric feature, by which the system recognizes me. A password, by contrast, is something I need to memorize. I shouldn't write it down anywhere, because otherwise anyone who finds it can pretend to be me. The future is multi-factor authentication, or at least two-factor authentication. And I think that ultimately the most user-friendly systems will be the ones used the most. So biometric identification is convenient. But is our personal data safe? Companies using this tech have to ensure that biometric data is securely stored and encrypted. Ideally, on end-user devices and not in some cloud. This makes it harder for hackers to get to. Unfortunately, that's not always done. A team of Israeli researchers managed to hack into a 23 gigabyte database with over 27 million records, containing fingerprints, facial profiles and much more. But of course, password databases have also been compromised. Beyond large-scale hacks, there's also a risk of individual systems and devices being cracked. And I'm a bit worried about how successful hackers have been at outwitting biometrics. A password can be stolen. Someone can watch you enter it somewhere, or find where you wrote it down, or even just guess it. This can't happen with biometric identification tech. 
biometrics are convenient and save users from having to remember passwords. But unlike passwords, you can't change your biometrical data if it's been hacked. And under lab conditions, hackers have managed to outsmart biometric encryption technologies. For instance, they duped an iPhone fingerprint scanner using a fingerprint they'd lifted from a glass. And combining a picture of a person's iris with a contact lens got them past a Samsung phone iris scanner. Hackers from Germany's Chaos Computer Club have developed a wax hand that fooled a palm vein scanner. And Chinese hackers spoofed Apple's Face ID liveness detection technology with just a pair of glasses and some tape. We should stress all these hacks were carried out under lab conditions. The quality of a system's sensors largely determines how safe it is, which means smartphones are easier to outwit than elaborate security systems. Clearly, biometrics aren't as safe as you might think, even though a scenario like taking a fake wax hand along to break into a high security area isn't very realistic either. Still. Many tech companies keep rolling out biometrical security features. The latest Apple and Google smartphones, for example, let you make payments using facial recognition tech. Pretty convenient. But is my personal data safe with these companies? And what if companies or states get too nosy? In Great Britain, CCTV cameras are ubiquitous. The average Londoner is caught on camera 300 times every day. What if facial recognition technology were applied to analyze that CCTV footage? Surveillance cameras are widespread in Britain, and London has been called Europe's CCTV capital. People have even begun using them independently of the authorities. Because you can go on Facebook now, get people's profile images, and easy as that, upload them onto your own software, criminals, etc., in the area, police upload their images all over the online. You can pick up them images, add them to your security system. When that person crosses your cameras, your system picks it up. So it's as easy as that now. Easy, perhaps, but it's also an invasion of privacy. In Britain, many are used to CCTV cameras. But since authorities have started combining surveillance cameras with facial recognition tech, some say this goes too far. People like Ed Bridges from Cardiff, who recently made a shocking discovery. The van was parked just around the corner, and the, by the time I was close enough to see facial recognition technology written on the van, it had already captured my data several times over. Uh, and that felt like an invasion of my privacy. I'm a, a law-abiding member of the public. I was going about my daily business. I wasn't committing any crime. I was no threat to anyone. And yet the police were there filming me and capturing my data, essentially. Bridges took the Welsh police to court and lost. He's currently appealing that ruling, but for now, police continue to use their tech, scanning hundreds of faces per second, checking them against wanted lists. We are learning, we are developing, and, and there are actually people being taken off the streets um, who are wanted for offences or who haven't appeared at court as a direct result of the deployment of this technology. The question remains whether the ends really justify the means. If you ask me, we should all be wary of handing out our biometric data. I wonder if the convenience outweighs the potential risks. Researchers are already working on so-called cancelable biometrics. Here, the biometric data is encrypted before it's stored. In a nutshell, this means that not my actual face is stored, but a digitally altered version. If anyone hacks the system, I can delete my data and create a new biometric password. That sounds pretty good. And there are even more options, like behavioral biometrics. Here, smartphones and wearables analyze how we type or the way we walk, for example. There's a software that captures how fast we walk, the length of our steps, and our hip movement, and uses this data to create a movement profile by which it authenticates us. The smartphone can then communicate with a gate, for example, and unlock it when we approach. But if your movement doesn't match the profile, the door will remain locked. Simple behavioral sequences, such as how you get your smartphone out of your pocket, can be enough to identify you. 
Tying this technology into everyday movements can be very convenient because you wouldn't have to do anything to authenticate yourself. The software can tap into your smartphone's and wearables sensors. Then it calculates a trust level based on your behavior. This means it assesses the odds that it's really you using the device and not some stranger. The advantage of this behavioral system is that the other party does not actually need to save your movement profile. This data is only registered by your smartphone. That's where the trust score is calculated. And only this score is shared with the service provider. This means your phone alone registers your movements. No sensitive private data is saved on a cloud or shared with a service provider. That makes this method particularly secure. It would put an end to the big problem we currently have with leaked password files and leaked biometrical data. Cybercriminals are selling this data online. By using behavioral profiles, this problem would disappear overnight. Behavioral security technology and multi-factor authentication are very secure. As a rule of thumb, the more elaborate the security method and sensors, the better. But so far, hackers have always managed to crack biometrical security systems under lab conditions. Facial recognition, fingerprint scanners, palm vein recognition, nothing is 100% safe. Which doesn't mean we should be going back to passwords, because these also get stolen. Plus, many people think two-factor authentication is a hassle. That said, we should think carefully about if we want to use biometrical passwords at all, and which companies we trust with this sensitive information. What do you think? Are things like using a fingerprint for online banking a great idea or pretty reckless? Let us know here. That's all from me. Bye-bye.